Today I'm going to share with you what I think is one of the most important station accessories, especially if you like to do group ham radio operations. So please keep watching for more. A viewer recently sent me a message about bandpass filters and wanted more information on how they work and what is their purpose. So let's talk about the three types of station filters, high pass, low pass, and bandpass filters. And I'll tell you why I like to carry a set of bandpass filters when I do a parks on the air activation. Filtering is an important component of an amateur radio transceiver. We often talk about weak filters or front end overload when describing the characteristics of inexpensive transceivers, but in fact all transceivers require filtering of some sort. Modern transceivers have digital signal processing that can employ a wide range of filter bandwidths and shapes and older transceivers will use analog or mechanical filters to limit the amount of signal entering into the receiver. But filtering built into a transceiver can only do so much and sometimes we need to add accessory filters to block out a range of frequencies. There are three types of filters that do that, high pass, low pass, and band pass. High pass filters allow frequencies of a range above the filter set frequency to pass through. Typically a high pass filter is set to about 1.8 MHz and let frequencies above this range pass to the transceiver. They are commonly used if you have a powerful AM broadcast station close by that is interfering and you want to block their signal. Low pass filters allow frequencies of a range below the filter set frequency to pass through. Typically a low pass filter is set to about 30 MHz and will let frequencies below that range pass to the transceiver. They are used to block out spurs and spurious emissions from your transmitter that may be interfering with televisions or other receivers, especially if you're running an amplifier. Low pass filters used to be quite common in the days of analog television, but now with digital TV and broadcast frequencies up in the UHF range, they really aren't as necessary. Band pass filters combine the low and the high pass to allow just a certain range of frequencies to pass through. Usually they are set for a particular band, like the 20 meter band. So you can transmit and receive on that band and not affect the transmitters on other bands. But some band pass filters can be very tight. For example, a VHF filter may be used at a repeater site to allow this repeater's frequency to pass through and block out all other VHF transmitters that may be located on the same communication tower. Hey, I'm just going to jump in and say that if you like this video and find it interesting and want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe. That's my indicator to produce more of these types of videos. Thank you for your support. How does a filter work? A filter is a tuned circuit with inductors and a capacitor. This is a tuned circuit, so the filter's cutoff frequency and passband can be adjusted by the amount of inductance and capacitance in the circuit. In a low-pass filter, the inductor is in the circuit and the capacitor runs to ground. Conversely, in a high-pass filter, the inductor runs to ground and the capacitor is part of the circuit. That distinction is notable, because if we combine the two, we end up with a band-pass filter. By adjusting the capacitance and inductance on both ends, we can precisely set the cutoff frequency for the filter. Signals inside the passband will be allowed through the filter and outside the passband will be cut off. If we look at the filter, you may think that the construction is very sloppy, but in reality all that hot glue is holding the inductor precisely in place for the proper cutoff frequencies. It is important to know that this is a tuned circuit. You can transmit through the filter if your transmit frequency is within the passband but you can also damage any of these filters if you transmit outside of their specified range. So why do I like bandpass filters? Well, bandpass filters are vital if you're doing a parks on the air activation with friends. We can operate on different bands in close proximity to each other and keep interference to a minimum. They won't block out everything, but they are good enough that you can copy weak stations on 20 meter phone without having that 40 meter FT8 signal blasting through. If you're setting up for field day, bandpass filters are essential for everyone getting along. Anytime you have stations and antennas in close proximity, you will need an external filter. But you do need to remember to remove or change the filter if you change bands. So if you bring your filters out to field day, a bit of education to the other operators will be in order. The filters I use aren't that expensive. 
This one from Morgan Systems is about $80. I have three in my arsenal, one for 40, 20, and 15 meters. If I only had money for one filter, I'd start with the 40 meter band and slowly work in the others. My collection has grown over the past few years. Usually I realize I need one and then I get another filter. So you don't have to buy a full set all at once. So filtering, especially with bandpass filters, can be extremely useful out in the field and with group ham radio activations. Are you a filter user? What's your experiences? I'll leave them down in the comments below. Now that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.